Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Unbox Live. I'm your host, Rob Gagne, and I'm super excited about today's announcement. We have Brian from Provada Cigar Club and Mr. Q. If you remember back to last week, we were talking about the Black History Cigar Month that Provada Cigar Club released and all the proceeds, $10,000 scholarship, going to a, uh, a recipient in the Racing Wisconsin YMCA. It's $10,000 scholarship, and we have the announced winner of that scholarship. So I'm going to bring in Brian and Mr. Q right now. We're gonna to get to the bottom of this. Welcome gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. This hey, is hey. an exciting day. Oh yes, yeah, excited, excited. Oh my god. Very gosh. cool. We have a recipient of the $10,000 scholarship, but let's go back, tell a little bit of the backstory, right? Brian, you got approached by Mr. Q, who is a Provada Cigar Club member. Yes. Mr. Q runs a YMCA, and he was saying, hey, let's do something where we can give back to a scholarship recipient, right? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, this is, um, this is, this is all in the book. Uh, I, I, you know, Part of the reason why Pravada has become so successful is because we're li constantly listening to our members. It is not, Pravada is not just me. It's not just Clark. It's not just the employees. It's every, all the members are, are chipping in every month. And, you know, I'm, I am tasked with curating those cigars, but it is all of us. And so I listened to constant feedback. And so Mr. Q wrote me and he was like, I challenge you to do something for Black History Month. He didn't say exactly what. And... I kind of understood the, the, the challenge there or why it was a challenge. And I'd like to see within the next five to 10 years, a cigar industry where that's no longer a challenge, where it becomes the norm. And so uh, I thought about it and I said, yeah, you know what, man? I think we're, we're uh, successful enough to be completely confident in doing whatever we want to do, especially when it has a good cause behind it. And so, uh, I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I was like, you know, I'm a big I, money and me, like, especially it within the business, like it's not my personal finance. I just, to me, it's just numbers. So I don't really, I didn't, I'm not like, Oh my God, it's maybe we should do a thousand dollars. I was like, nah, let's just, how much would I tallied up the cost? I tallied up what the profit would be. And I was like, okay, how, let's just do the whole thing. And the other cigar manufacturers that helped in the making of this, which was Black Star Line Cigars out of Chicago, and my man Dean at Epic Cigars uh, out of uh, Florida, they they were like, yeah, no, we'll we'll give our entire, um, wow. yeah, the the all the entire proceeds too, which comes to about ten grand. So, so I was like, okay, that's what we're gonna do. So everyone's participating from the people who yeah. blended it to now you and. I mean, basically all you're doing is paying for the cigar to get made. Yeah. That's amazing. 100%. Yeah. So Mr. Q, how did the selection process go? I mean, Brian basically said, Hey, I want this to go to somebody who could really, really use it because yeah. it could be a deciding factor whether or not they go to college or not. Yeah. You know what? I would say the process was taxing. Um, it's almost, it's, not, it's almost a sad story, right? I, I, I thought that I would have, uh, you know, 20, 30, African-American males knocking at my door saying, hey, I'm ready to accept this scholarship and it was going to be a longer process. The process was seriously trying to find that right one. Um, I talked to a good handful and just a handful and I reached out to as many, the schools, the colleges to find that particular, you know, that this demographic. And I'm telling you, the ones that I, the handful that I did receive and I talked to, Many of them didn't even apply to college. They had a desire to want to go, but they haven't even applied, you know? And so that took them out the running right there. This is February, right? This is February. So you're, 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 you're pretty much done. Um, and then literally the last person I called was our recipient. No way. The last person he, he was the that last, deciding factor. He was the last, I mean, I'm, I'm texting Brian like, man, we may have to push this back because I am not having wow. any luck. Cause see, he he took the kids that I really deal with. He cut them out like nah. Yeah, I, I feel bad. I I sort of feel bad about that because <laughs> he you know, them, man. I, I I I sort of feel bad about that. And and if any of those kids at any point during the school year need help, call me. Oh, okay. No, um, I, I, I I no, but I I I would you know I mean listen I can't give ten grand but you know whatever just just call me if if any of them need help because they deserve it. They are the ones that 
are, are really they, working. But what I really wanted was I thought about myself in this matter and I thought about how someone, uh, um, I just wanted to make sure, look, I, there's no pressure on whoever we give this to, like, but I wanted to make sure that it was someone, to me, it's like the kid with the straight A's and that already has right. the 70% right. scholarship. Right. It was like, well, they're, they're going to do just yeah, great. Right. 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 And so I wanted to find someone who was kind of on that cusp of, are they going to go? Are they not going to go? And and right. I really think that this could make a difference in their life. I so yeah, there, so there was actually two, 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 young, two young brothers I was talking with. And so Shamar was the last one. And I said, hey, have you applied and been accepted? He said, I have applied to Gateway Technical College, which is a local college here in Racine, Wisconsin. And he said, um, I haven't heard back. So I go start hitting my contacts locally. Come to find out, I called Shamar and I said, my man, you've been accepted to Gateway. So him and his mom was like, oh, OK, great. Yeah. And I said, now. Nah. And so I shared the link to from the Provada YouTube channel to explain kind of what's going on. And um, so I just called Shamar and we had a we had a Zoom call. That's when mom popped in. So bam, you know, and that's not <laughs> that normal, right? Right. You know, so Shamar is that kid who is brilliant. He's brilliant, and he was planning a, to go to college, but he just didn't know how he was going to pay for it. And so he had to have a plan B and a plan C. And I said, my man, this $10,000 that we're about to give you, you don't need no B or C. It is it's your plan A. Nice. And you're going to Gateway. It's pretty, and I already talked to the president of the, of, the, of the college. He said that pays for his whole two years. Wow. He said wow. for wow. two years. Wow. Okay. And then and I told him now to make sure because we all know that things happen. Right. I said, you're going to now connect with us at the Y. And we're going to make sure that when you need, if there's trouble or issues, or whatever the case may be, you call us because we're going to make sure you're going to complete wow. and get your associates. But then there are programs at Gateway that fund them to go to four years. And so we're going to make sure. OK. And and and, and I want to tell you. Brian may say it was my idea. I only called him about black history. This dude came back with this $10,000 scholarship and I'm like, what in the heck is this about? Yeah. So he a humble dude. That was not my idea. It was purely his. And then for the group, the club to step up, man, come on. Yeah, man. The cigar Absolutely. World. Let's bring Shamar in. It's a beautiful world and Pravada and Pravada did it. So my man right here, Shamar Brown is the recipient of the Pravada uh, first scholarship going to yeah, get buddy. college. Hey, congratulations, man. Can you hear us? <laughs> he might be frozen. He's frozen now. There he is. Uh oh, you there, Shamar? Thank you. Thank you. And um, thank you for giving me this opportunity. It's it's our pleasure. You know, and the kids, let me say, the kids in Racine, they're, uh, they've been virtual. Uh, yeah, the whole I'm, I'm just having internet issues. It's gone really slow for some weird reason. No, no problem. No problem, man. We just wanted to see you put a face with the, uh, you know, with the, with the whole thing. And uh, hopefully at least you can go back over this and, and listen to it again and, you know, um, but yeah, no, we're super proud, man. I know everyone in the club is super happy to be involved with this. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you to Mr. Q for making this happen. And, you know, it's just it's just a super positive thing. And there's no reason why, um, you know, other people in this industry aren't doing similar things. And I think that this is going to change that. And I'm I'm very happy um, to see that this is going to make a difference. And I also want to mention this. I don't want you to feel any pressure because we gave you money. Life is life. I know Mr. Q is going to, sounds like he's going to ride you a little bit, but, <laughs> but listen, <laughs> listen to me. I don't want you to feel any extra pressure. There's no need for that. Okay. If it, you know, if it's supposed to be, it's going to be, and, and, and you'll make it work. And, um, you know, I'm not going to hold you to it or be disappointed with you for anything else. But I do also want to make sure that you have my number and that you can call me for advice anytime you want. I, I like to think I'm a pretty good entrepreneur. And if you need any, I've made all the mistakes one can possibly make in life. So if you need any advice, 
at all, I could probably tell you what the wrong thing to do would be so we yeah. could figure out the right thing to do, okay? Okay, so he's got internet issues, but he'll 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 be able to watch this later. Yeah, yeah he'll watch it. He'll yeah. watch it. And I'll make sure that he, you know, he sends thank you letters and things of that nature. No, so, no problem. It's, it's yeah, no we, problem. And no, and, and, and let me just say this as we end this this, this piece. Uh and, and we'll document, you know, I'll make sure right. that, you know, uh we'll bring them on and 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 I'll do some okay. things, podcasts just to let yeah. let the club yeah. know how this young man is doing. Yeah. He, I'm telling you, he's brilliant. I, 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 you know, listen, I, I put a lot of things together um, over the phone. I've always done phone sales to some degree and I pick up a lot. I always tell my wife, it's like my sixth sense. I pick up a lot from just the first words I hear your voice, the, 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 the voice that you have in life by the time you're a young man, 18 years old, there's something to that. You can hear things. Uh, and obviously there are con people in the world that learned how to manipulate that, but this is not the case with most people. And so uh, he sounds just instantly like a young, honest man. Right. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's going to do great. Oh yeah. And, and, and listen, man, it's uh, uh, Mr. Q. I mean, you know, we, the, I think the community needs more positive role models like you, man. It's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Hey, we are provided. That's all I got to say. All right, That's cool. That's right. One I mean, you cigar. didn't even you, you didn't even have to talk. Oh, you were just I think you emailed me about a cigar or something like that. Like, you know, to that the fact that you were even thinking about it to bring it up just tells me that you know, you know, your heart's in the right place. So, thank you. No problem, man. Absolutely. No problem. Look at you guys creating history in the cigar <laughs> business. One cigar changing the lives of people, getting them to college amazing what a cool Pretty success cool. story and look, i am so pleased to be a part of this story just for let me capture it brian mr q you guys you guys are the true heroes here spreading the love and brian i don't know if you know this brian you are and pravada is working with the first african-american ceo of the racine family ymca and probably the wow. first one in the state of wisconsin so this you're making wow. history across the board baby i i, I love it and yeah. and rob you're the only one that covered this. So Amen. I hopefully, you know, that changes too over time. But, yeah. you know, I, I think uh, uh, this is the next generation of cigar smokers of the cigar industry. And, you know, some of the old guys will catch up and some of the new guys, this will be the norm. And that's important. Brian, when I called you, I don't know, what was it, three, four years ago? I would have yeah. never thought. Yeah this is the direction we were going with Pravada Cigar Club. <laughs> that is so amazing. The fact that that phone call and what you've done with the club, and like you said, just changing the whole paradigm. This is yeah. such a cool community to be a Ooh. part of. The hashtag We Are Pravada, it's not a marketing stint. It is right. a culture, and I'm yeah. so proud to be a part of it. Yeah. Amazing Thank you, story, Rob. guys. Thank you. Shamar, congratulations to you. Mr. Q, thank you so much for plugging us in and setting up this challenge. Without your challenge, Brian wouldn't have answered. And Brian, thank you so much for taking the challenge and taking it to the next level. Holy yeah, man. cow. We got I, I, just mind blown over here that we just did me this. Too. That you me did too. This. Unbelievable. Cool. Thank Thanks, you all Rob. so much. Have a great Friday. Stay tuned here. We're going to keep on going with Brian from Pravada Cigar Club. And we're going to bring in Ben. We're going to talk about the top 25 cigars of 2020. Now this definitely Ben. Welcome Ben. How you doing? All right, we got her unmuted now. How you doing? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Not a whole lot. Did you just catch the whole, you know, what's going on behind the scenes? This is amazing, isn't it? That we just gave uh, Brian just gave ten thousand dollars to a scholarship winner. Yo, I I am overjoyed by that. I always say, you know, life is generous. And anytime, you know, people go looking for people that need help, especially in the black community, it warms my heart because there's a lot of opportunities that don't get to us or opportunities that we don't even know are available. And so my, uh, my ponytail is off to you. <laughs> uh, I don't have a hat on today, but my ponytail is off to you. Um, for, I think my for wife has that ponytail. <laughs> 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 so, okay, cool. Well, thank you so much. And, and listen, this is on the Pravada members. 
I'd like to think that, you know, I'd be, I'd be able to do this uh, solo, but it, it wouldn't be anything without them. And Rob, I always tell you, I don't, I honestly don't know that Pravada would be a thing without you. So appreciate that, man. It totally yeah. would have been because. You so who's Ben? Who am I on going. with? Who ben is this is, person? Ben is welcoming to the Boveda, uh part of our podcasting and, and some other things that we're going to be doing. So Ben is cool. Sisters in Smoke. She works with a bunch of different cigar brands in the industry. Nice. Predominantly Adventura she works with um, okay. right now, but she is a, uh, a tobacconist. She's working in the tobacco field right now. I mean, just amazing. Wow. So you work with William over there? Is that is that isn't it William? I work closer with uh, Marcel and Henderson. Okay, Henderson. That's yeah. what I meant. Henderson. Yeah, he's a great guy. Great blender. Great factory yeah. to be a part of, man. I mean, that's, that's, oh. that's impressive. Absolutely, I love those guys. They gave me my first yeah. industry job, and you know, they they continue to rock with me. So I'm I really appreciate it. I love it over very, there. Very cool. Where are you based out of? I'm in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So, so top 25, you guys, I have been deliberating on this because ben, <laughs> I know you have an opinion, Ben, I know you have an opinion, but <laughs> we don't need to get too far in the weeds, but the top 25 just came out and it's everywhere, right? You mm -hmm. all know the top leader yeah. is cigar aficionado top 25. It, yeah. it makes a big wave. But as I look through all these different lists, there's all these different criterias and does it really matter and how does it yeah. get justified and every single one is different so i find it very interesting for you guys um when you look at the top 25 coming out how much weight do you put towards that and and it could be any publication that you follow yeah um ben you want to go or you want me to go ladies oh, first go. <laughs> oh, okay okay uh, no, i i whatever you want okay so i for me personally, um, I want to be as biased as possible. And I think that that's the theme of my answer to you is that the companies that are putting out the miss list uh, are companies that I used to believe could be biased on some level. But I do believe, look, I think out of 20 cigars that make a list, I know that five to seven, maybe eight or nine of those these are advertisers. They're on that list for a reason. They, they may not have been, but it's just reality. It's reality. It's like, you know, a news channel or something. Their, their, their sponsors are going to be talked about in the news stories because that's who's keeping the lights on. So I, I think all of us look at those lists and know that there's a little bit of that. Yet every year we still put weight into these lists. So they're desirable for some reason human nature of some sort and right. and they're cool even i like I, there are some years where i'm like that's garbage but i still read it i still get interested in it and i still talk about it <laughs> absolutely you know i agree with you i uh I, I told rob this before you know it's it's interesting how cigars that people have been smoking for years still end up on the list and no shade to really good cigars but why do i keep seeing the Oliva. Why do I keep seeing the same Cuban cigars? And, you know, yes, there's a new Vitola. Yes, there's a large <laughs> amount of, you know, there's a large amount of advertising, but there are so many brands and so many cigars that could and should make those lists because they right. were produced in a certain time frame. And I think it's a little unfair to people who have spent their time, their labor, have offered their love and hard work through their family's legacy not to be considered yeah. for those lists. I don't wanna keep yeah. seeing the same ones. I, right. you know, I wanna, I wanna look at that yeah. list and say, hey, what do I need to smoke? What have sure. I missed? What do I need to you know, dig deep on the internet and in my purse, in my coin purse to buy yeah. that I missed and I can't do that if you keep putting the same six cigars on the list every year, <laughs> every well, year. And, and you know, now that you're saying that, um, I think that that's something that's probably also contributed to Pravada Cigar Club's success too, is that we don't, we don't have any of those cigars. It's all completely <laughs> unique, rare stuff. They might be from, they might be from the Adventura factory, Right. And mm -hmm. we access that we, we, we uh, uh, advertise the factory and, and tell the story of that factory. But, mm -hmm. you know, and 
And I'd love to tell you that the success of Pravada is all my fault and I'm such an amazing person. But the truth is, I think right time, right, right, right product. Like people were looking for the, the newer, rarer, more exclusive. Uh, and they also wanted more information on these cigars. So there's some companies yeah. like, like Padron. Padron makes the top 25 list every year. Every um, year. Yeah, every year. <laughs> and is there is there any out in my mind that if a new company came out and and consistently produced a product like Padron, that they would probably eventually end up on a top 25 list? 100%. Do they deserve to be there? 100%. Should they be there the 25th year in a row? I don't know. Like you said, like we already know to buy that. And I think we use these t- top 25 lists the, the less – into the industry you are or the less into cigar smoking you are the more of a novice you are the more you're using that list to buy which is another thing about that list that really bothers me is that i know that if something is top one two or three on aficionado if i don't have a box of that or a or some of that cigar from prior to that result coming out that yeah. their cigar will probably not be the same cigar they rated because the production is going to go nuts. They're going to sell a million cigars. I've literally, I've heard that from in, inside people that that top one spot and sometimes the second spot too can sell you a million cigars like overnight. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I always challenge the people that come into my lounge or people who want to smoke with me or, you know, or they ask me, well, what do you think about this list? What do you think about these top five? And I say, well, what do you think about the last five? Yeah. You know, do the run, run the list upside down, smoke from the bottom up, because usually the ones that are in that top five to eight are cigars that have been there for forever. And it's it's no knock. It's not to say that those cigars have fallen off if you don't put a Padron on there, if you don't put an Oliva on there. However, like you said, we already know that Padron has been consistent for forever. They sell themselves. You can have a whole cigar lounge of all the Padron, of all the Oliva, of all of the cigars made, produced, or sourced by tobacco from AJ Fernandez, those are going to sell. But what about the others? What about the ones in the middle? So, And as we're having this conversation, I know the title of this video was something to do with Top 25 because I saw it uh, on, on YouTube. Yeah. And I bet you that as many people agree with us on all of these points, they're probably all like, well, where's the list already? They, we love top lists. People love lists. Oh, yeah. All of the it, YouTube, the clickbait is all top 10 movies this year, top 10 what? diet, weight loss, top 10, you know, so we love lists. That's the bottom line. Yes. And, and yeah, Ben, I think there's so many brands, especially if you're including boutique brands, there's so uh-huh. many brands. Like if you go to my website right now, we just decided to do a, a big push a couple of weeks ago and we said, hey, we're going to give all the boutique brands a shot on our site. I'm not going to oh, say wow. which ones I like or what that's not for me to say in the shop. In the in the club, that's a different story. But for the shop, we're going to give every If you go to our website right now, you look in our shop, regular production, you are going to we're all looking at this list every day like I have never heard of some of these but and they've been in the business for years. They sell regionally, mm-hmm. locally. And so there's all these great brands out there. So I think there's got to be some sort of a criteria. And I'll tell you what the industry is missing before I think we get into the cigars. We are missing a rating system that is universal to our entire industry or at least a um, group of people, some sort of, you know, uh, uh, rating group, the international tobacconist sommelier of America. You know, there's 10 people on that board and they all smoke those cigars and, and rate them each year. We don't have that. We have magazines. And when you have magazines or blogs, you're, again, these if you're paying for advertising, there is always, doesn't matter how honest you are. And I believe that some of the people in this industry are very honest and they try to be very biased, but it doesn't matter. In the end, these people are keeping your lights on. So there has to be, even if it's not biased to the cigar itself, it's why are you smoking that cigar? How did that cigar even land on your table to be considered for the top 25 list? It landed there because those people are advertisers on your site. So I'm not saying that the the actual rating itself will be impaired, but the the fact is, like you said, 
Uh, you know who ended up on the top 25 list this year? And I think it was one of the best cigars out this year. It was from Adventure. It's Corona. Yes. I have, yeah, it's Queen's a, Pearl. A, yeah. That cigar? Wow. Listen. Shit, wow. across the board. Wow. wow. Yes, Rob is showing out. <laughs> Rob is showing out. That, that, is that so cigar's on my top in my list. top. That's on my the top of my list. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. Yes, absolutely. I only found it on Half Wheel's top list. Yeah. Not on any print publication yeah which, yeah absolutely i mean that's, but, i think that's where you get brian where you're like well is it the advertisers or not but i mean if you do look at a cigar fish you know, top 25 list there are people on there that do not advertise in that magazine there so, are they always pick they always pick a, a group of either young or up and coming you know i think they uh, through the years they sponsor someone robert caldwell was mentioned a lot in there without advertising a few years ago and then he mm -hmm. kind of like got thrown off that list and then they picked up the guy from warped they've been really backing a lot of his stuff and then they'll drop him they've given uh matt booth a lot of love through the years they they, they seem to like a certain group of people um yeah so who knows? And it's interesting to look, like you said, the criteria. I think that's a great point, right? You know, everyone's working from a different criteria. You go to half wheel and it's like, it has to be released during this time frame. It has to hit over 91. It, you know, all these things have to happen. It's a right. scientific uh, adventure with those guys, yeah. And, and two, like, if we're only going to be talking about cigars that got released last year or by a certain time period, you know, Cigar Coop, he's got, he's got like a two-year two time period on it. Um, huh. I'm not even sure what the criteria is for cigar aficionado. I've never. Yeah, they don't. They're like they're just like we're cigar that. aficionado. We don't have to tell you what our criteria is. Just read the list. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just read the list. I would right. love to know what the criteria is because it, to me that puts some weight to Bro, it. Right? Like I just want to point. say, I, I I could revamp cigar fish. I could make cigar aficionado the hottest thing again, and it would be so easy. And I feel like they're just letting the young market slide right past them. And it's a shame because it still holds weight. Even though a lot of us look at the, the magazine and we're like, what? There's not, there's no, not a ton of substance to the magazine itself. It is a great thing to look at. It is enjoyable to have on. I love seeing it on a coffee table, on a book. If I walk into someone's house and they have cigar aficionado, I'm like, I'm in the right house. We're going to have <laughs> We're gonna yeah. we're gonna have things to talk about, but right. I just feel like they're letting our young, you know, cigar movement really just slip through their fingers. Well, listen, you know, Cigar Aficionado is the Playboy magazine of right. cigars, right? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> they know what their is, viewers. What does that make us? But listen, you know, they at a time where everything is primarily digital, they have maintained the traditional aspect of the tobacco industry. They are hanging on by those advertisers and to keep the lights on, you see those sticks pop up two, three, 10 years at a time. And whatever their template is, they stick to it because they know it works. When they decide not to, is when you will start to see there being problems in house with keeping that magazine going. And yeah. I think that is the underlying foundation uh, to why the list is the way that it is, why they advertise to who they advertise to, in that they may be, my opinion, they may be a little apprehensive about throwing half of those new boutique brands in because the sustainability and marketing, yeah. the sustainability yeah. to produce. They and also, you know, it. they can't, they might not be able to keep it up and they, there might not be a long-term investment into yeah. it. But then if they do invest and stick to it, they might see that they, they are welcome a new generation and not just smokers, but brands and people that are really out here that following in the footsteps yeah, of those, that, those, those old school people. Yeah. And, and that can pay those, those uh, hefty advertising fees. Um, oh man, I had a great thing to say, but I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys smoke this? This is Katrina. Um, this comes out of Oscar Valadares, uh, factory, but it is a different brand. Um, Katrina, they do. Oh, this, oh, we're showing cigars now. Is that what we're doing? Hold well, on. <laughs> yeah, man, just a little bit. This is uh, one of my top five because 
this cigar, I don't even know who makes this, like what the name of the company is. Somebody out in the comments, please help me out. Katrina, uh, exclusively for, and it's in Spanish, Bureau exclusive, uh, Honduran. Yeah. Anyways, this was a phenomenal cigar. I absolutely love it. It's Corojo. Um, great stick. I love this stick. Didn't make any top 25 list, but man, for me, which one is that? This is the Katrina. The Katrina. Okay. Yeah, Ooh. I thought that was the um, the Dan Lee. It's a beautiful style. box. Yeah. It is a beautiful box. Um, yes. Yeah. And even the the cool, I mean, mm -hmm. packaging is always fun. Dan yeah. Lee Honduran Tobacco. Yes. When I was in Honduras, I picked this box up and I was just blown away. Again, mm -hmm. coming out of Oscar Valadares' factory, this was a phenomenal. It, he does great work, huh? We we have not worked with him yet, but he yeah, does. But a lot of great stuff um you know i've 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 seen him on a lot of people's lists uh, yeah i'm gonna have to talk about uh that the pearl again is <laughs> phenomenal um mm -hmm. the box was just amazing I mean, uh, you know what henderson and marcel do a really good job at merchandising uh their adventure line they have that box listen the conqueror came in a beautiful wood ship Okay, where yeah, you can yeah. stick this, where you can stick the cigar up top. Yeah. You know, they have really put a lot of love and care into the packaging, and also want the brand. You know, the the shops to advertise and merchandise their shops with the box. You know, if you're gonna spend that kind of money, might as well be on display, right? <laughs> I mean, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I have to mention the Cookie Monster, even though it was a Pravada Cigar Club, it was also an LCA thing, and it just the 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 amount of attention they got it must have been decent you know absolutely yeah well, Brian you know Edgar uh, Edgar, Edgar Suet yeah yeah dude this is his um I I don't even know the name Bella something and this is a Pennsylvania broadleaf oh oh my goodness yeah uh, is he is a talented oh. talented young uh cigar blender. He had something in our club called the Corojo Mono Varietal. Yes. Which I, I told him he, he, he needs to let me pick his names for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it like, a, really, you can barely say the word Mono Varietal. And um, I got so much positive feedback on it. And it was such an, a complex cigar. Each puff, you were almost like faced with different flavors. And it was really incredible. He's a very talented guy, and I have a feeling he's going to end up being, you know, a Fuente type in the future. Absolutely. Loved it. I, I love everything that he's doing. I Again, I had to buy a bunch of samplers just because I was like, ah, this blender, Edgar, is amazing. It's yeah. so, so good. Yeah, he's great. He's a huge part of what we do here at Pravada. Um, who, what else, Ben? What's, what's on your radar? Like, what was some of the things that you smoked that were, like, phenomenal? I uh, I smoked and loved uh, the Pony Express Daughters of the Wind Small Batch yes. Exclusive. Okay, uh, that's one of my favorites. Uh, the Casa Cuba Divine Inspiration. I enjoy. Actually, I'm probably going to be in trouble because I've probably smoked half the box here in my lounge. <laughs> as is, either I'm smoking it or I'm slinging it. It's like I <laughs> I tore those down. Um, I'm also obsessed with the Claude Lechine. Oh yeah, the yeah. Works. Also, yeah. uh, small batch exclusive, and I just finished uh, the last uh, cigar from my Black History uh, Month smokes called "The Arrival" by Ken Hamlin, and I was really, really impressed with uh, the collaboration with Manny from Laura. Uh -huh. Lots of cinnamon notes, really great espresso, and uh, and obviously the Adventura uh, Queen's yeah. Pearl. Yeah, it's literally there, at the top of my list. Yeah, there was a cigar that I wish I could share with every cigar smoker uh, that we had this year, and it was called the Plato y Ploma from Sinistro Cigars. It is a Lancero. Mm -hmm. It's a Connecticut Lancero. It utilizes a type of tobacco that only La Aurora makes called Anduya, which is it almost turns the tobacco into a paste and it gets wrapped in banana leaves and stuff. It's really cool. And it was probably my favorite cigar of the year for sure. Wow. Yeah. Your favorite. It, it, yeah, my favorite. Yeah. 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 If I if I could only smoke one cigar for the rest of my life, it would be that. 
Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's so, a lot of pressure so, you put on me there. So the, uh, the pearl, the pearl is like a decadent dessert. Oh, and yeah. this is a little bit more like, um, it's a little bit more pepper and a little bit more, it's a little less nuanced than more like the, it's very satisfying on the palate, the sensations and stuff. So it's, they're two totally different cigars. I'm only referencing them because they're both Connecticut's and thin ring gauges, but, um, mm -hmm both two totally different cigars, but those are both on my list. Um, can we, we talk to people commenting there? So we'll pop some of these, uh, some of the people up. But yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Um, I think uh, crown heads did a really great job this year with the mill Diaz. Yes. I, I think that was fantastic. That was uh, a great stick. Yeah. It was a good stick, but you know what? People either loved it or hated it. But yes, I feel like yeah. if you do not get in on that Corona size, you might actually miss why people really love it. Because the larger size is okay, it's good. Yeah. It's, it's cool. But scale down, grade down to that, that Corona, you'd be like, oh, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey I'm, a big a I'm a big Corona person. And oh, 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 oh. Ooh. The the uh oh my god this is such a, I I swear to you the first puff out of this cigar and I, I I was doing a live or something like this and I involuntarily like a knee jerk reaction smacked the table like that and I was like oh my god that's amazing and that my cool. wife was there she was like what is wrong with you I was just like oh I don't know man I this cigar is so good it is the Illusione Hot Ten Anniversary uh, it's called like the the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the what is it called? Called the the, the uh, Illusione tenth anniversary. The Alsta, the Alsta, something like that. It's like mm. their ten year Epernay, and the Epernay is already a great oh star God, every year. Yeah. But this is phenomenal. Is. A little bit of gossip: they made that cigar for Davidoff, and Davidoff mm -hmm. and and Dion went back and forth on some artwork, and then the can the project got canned. And they just left it under uh, the Illusione name. And it is, if you can find these cigars, they are so worth picking up. Ooh. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you yeah. you got to love it when a cigar hits you like that. Where like, you're not even expecting it. You pick it up, you smoke it. And all of a sudden you're just like, oh my gosh, I need to sit down and I need to really focus yeah. on this cigar because it's so good. Oh. Espinosa Cuban Link. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. The Espinosa <laughs> Cuban Link is one of the only cigars that he's ever manufactured in Costa Rica. And it is so good. It's just phenomenal. We call it the Cuban link because it's like everything you would have wanted a Cuban cigar to be. You know you've been disappointed with Cuban cigars. Doesn't matter who you are, how much of a novice you are, there's a 50% chance that you got that Cuban cigar and you were like, oh, I can't wait. And you're like, what? It's <laughs> yeah. just not yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so whether it's from for draw issues or whatever. And so this is like everything you would want a Cuban a Cuban cigar to be. And then so I thought it's a because he let me play with the art on it. Not my best work, but we we named it the only built for Cuban links after the Raekwon album. Uh shout out to Wu Tang. <laughs> yeah. Shout so, out to Wu Tang. Yeah. <laughs> so we 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 had a lot of fun with that and it's really a phenomenal stick. Um I think you always have to mention Padrone. I think that, you know. They're, they're, uh, I, you know, listen, listen, they won't listen. This is a company and this is one Ben. one of my big jobs is to not let my ego get involved because Padron won't even sell directly to me. I don't have a physical location, so I can't carry Padron. Oh. Padron will not ever even look at the club. They're just too big for it. But I got to say this about that. I respect them because they stick to their laurels. They've never been big on collaborating or doing it. They have their market. They know what they do and they've been doing mm -hmm. it forever and they sell more than anyone. Yeah. I, I have heard that the Padron of today is not the same as the Padron of yesteryear. But when I smoke a Padron, I can clearly understand why some people only want to mess with Padron. Sure. And, and one of the things that I tell a lot of the manufacturers is, bro, the draw, man. We like mm -hmm. the new generation of cigar smokers. I think I can talk a little bit for them. I have 10,000 people in the club that write me emails every day and tell me what they like, what they don't like. We like a looser draw. Right. And, 
every Padron you cut open is almost too loose, and yet it smokes well, and you get a lot of mm -hmm. decent flavors. Not the most uh, uh, complex things, but um, I'll tell you who I was disappointed with this year. Oof. Ooh. I don't think it's a ooh. These are million dollars. <laughs> These are, I'm not going to do this. I would never say disappointment about a company that I thought it could potentially prevent them from eating or taking food off their table. This right. is a company that um, I feel like in yesteryear has done a good job of keeping a boutique uh, feel but also being a giant, which was Davidoff. I, I didn't see them do anything great this year in regards to like releases. Um, I know they caught a lot of flack for the Avo thing, which was like a really bad story that I won't repeat. Um, I just didn't see anything, you know, that was excellent come out of that camp this year, you know? Sure. Yeah. I, this All Saints cigar by Mickey Pegg, this is the Salamente. Which is funny, right? Because like Salamente meant, is meant to be like all one, uh, but he actually has an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper on this and a Nicaraguan filler and binder. Mm. But this, Brian, we talk about that sweetness that that Habano has. Yeah. Oh my God. Hey, can, I, I need, this. I need, I need to know about that. I need that in the shop. I don't have that. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, I we'll, never even heard of it before. We'll get you plugged with uh, with Mickey, and I think the Great. he says he wants to change. Um, this one to represent the name more, but I'm like, dude, please keep the Habano, yeah. Ecuadorian Habano wrapper and this this filled together and just rename it. I don't care what you name it. I just want more of it because you know, this is box worthy right here. That's, that's the thing with some of the smaller boutiques like Edgar. These guys are artists. They're constantly, I guess I'm frozen on the screen, but these guys are artists. They are constantly looking to change everything. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, man. Sit with it. Yeah. yeah, move no. on. Maybe move on to a different project, but leave this thing alone. Right. It's perfect the way it is, you know? I totally agree with you. I don't <laughs> mind the Frozen, by the way. It looks very uh, Brian-esque. It, it, it's it, very it, perfect. It, it caught you in a good shot. Yeah, okay, okay, good. good shot. Yeah, it's you. different if your like, you. eyes were open or your mouth was right. open and you're like talking, but no, it's perfect. I look like I'm giving the business. <laughs> Dapper Cigar Company. Brian, you brought Dapper in. Yeah. I love Dapper. Ian yeah. Reith. His cigars are amazing, made by Noxa, uh, which is the Oliva Tobacco Company's uh, kind of headquarters. And yeah. man, the Oliva Tobacco Company, you guys probably don't know this. I have a Box Press interview with John Oliva. Yeah. If you are interested in understanding who's actually growing and producing a ton of tobacco for all of the makers across the industry, check yeah. out the Box Press with uh, John Oliva Jr., it is amazing. You walk into a humidor, he's got 75% of the tobacco that that. Wow. That yeah, it, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. It really is. And Dapper uses their tobacco and it's just, I mean, obviously with others as well, but it's just excellent tobacco. Sweet. What Rob, is Mad Monkey? Right. Go back to that comment. Somebody's like, Mad, Mad Monkey is a brand that we just picked up. They're a new, this is what I'm saying, like with the new push of young brands. Yeah. Um, it, they have the best story. If you go on my YouTube channel and look up Mad Monkey, I read this story on the Mad Monkey in like a very dramatic lighting and everything, and it's really cool. Oh. And the cigars are worthy of smoking for sure. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Rob, what do you have there? Is it, you had a was that culture number three? Oh yeah, culture is that culture number, number three? three baby. Yeah. From Adrian Acosta. Oh, yeah. When I, I love this, Adrian. I was like, no way. This, yes, again, way. Brian, you talk about those nuances and those different yeah. characteristics coming out and the changes that happen throughout Adrian Acosta putting this together. And then the other thing that I really liked was on the back, he's telling you like the wrapper, the binder, the filler. There's five different fillers plus a wrapper binder. So that's a seven tobacco makeup. And that's like Davidoff does that a lot. They're like, dude, this is yeah. a seven filler or seven different types so, of tobacco. That's so amazing. Adrian I, grew up. In the in the Davidoff farms, his father okay. is the his father is the basically the seed engineer for Davidoff. So he's the guy oh, yeah. who hybridizes the seeds for Davidoff and stores all the seeds for Davidoff. So he grew up working on those farms. So he comes from that Davidoff style background, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like 
they should be tapping into that because Kellner's no longer at Davidoff, right? Eladio is still there as the master blender, but they're, you know, the namesake Kellner, that's no longer there. They need to be tapping into these kids that grew up there that have a passion, you know, for this. And uh, Adrian's a great guy. It's a great cigar. I have like oh my God, yeah. 200 of those packs sitting in my office and uh, they're all w waiting to go to Lucky Owners at some point, but they're phenomenal. Oh. And we're working on a blend with him in Nicaragua too, so. Oh, yeah. All yeah. right, baby. 2021 yeah, no, is getting good. I'm out here hustling. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Hey, Ken, you have a shop? What do you say? You, you have a shop? I do not have a shop. I'm a tobacconist okay. at the Continental Cigar Club in LA. Okay. Well, That's where we I'm at right now. We should be at least getting you some of our packages so that you can see what we're doing, but we should get the, the cigars in there for sale, too. We have a a whole thing that we just opened up called the LCA, which is the Limited Cigar Association. So we're working with okay. about 300 shops across the country right now and supplying them with like cool, rare, you know, harder to find stuff. So cool. I would love that. Yeah. Love to see yeah. what's inside that package. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. I love it. I get an email LCA, this is dropping. Here are the six stores or five stores that are in your area that you can go get this. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Get it. man. It's a lot of fun. I got, I got my cinna, I'm my cinnamon, my, whatever. Schminishman, yeah. Schminishman. You got your Schminishman. I love I that, that cigar. I got like ninety percent great reviews on it, and then I had a few guys tell me that it was too light for them, and I'm like, how is this cigar light? Really? It, yeah, I do not find it to be a light cigar. Really? It, you can't satisfy it. everyone, man. No, you, no, can't. you can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. Oh, uh, is it is yeah. it is that the, is that the one that uh that you said uh you can't sell? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, you can't sell. Can you just throw it on <laughs> I, over I, here? Because absolutely, I could give you, it to yeah, you. For sure. Why do I want to smoke what's yeah. forbidden? Let me in. <laughs> yeah, that's just it. So. Brian Brian did the whole thing just to make it forbidden fruit, and now we all want right. It. Is it the truth? <laughs> that, is it no, really? Say, here's the truth. The truth is, Pravada's heating up. And we're changing the industry. And oh, there are question. some people in this business that have had lawsuits prior, mm -hmm. have both uh, incited and been on the receiving end, okay? And I think that there are people in this industry that are very um, – they're starting to get a little ticked off. Like, why is this kid able to get away with things that we can't? And what they don't understand is that I'm not a brand. Right. I work with brands. And we do sure. one off. We do one off projects, and those one off projects aren't enough to get you a cease and desist because you're not selling enough. They're ten thousand cigars here and gone, done. Mm -hmm. What are, what right. are you going to cease and desist? They're already gone. Right. <laughs> Thank God. By the time They're you can out. call your lawyer, <laughs> we sold out. It's we, over. We Ryan, smoked them. <laughs> we got a question here. Arturo says, "Rob and Pravada collaboration." Oh when? my God, that would Man, be amazing. No, no offense, Arturo. We've been collaborating for a long time, my friend. So I need more specifics. <laughs> no, we need a Rob hear. Gagne cigar. That is oh, a hat. that. It, I would yes. totally be honored to do that. So doors Rob, always you, open. If it's you, a cigar collaboration, I'd love to do it. Do you eat oysters? I do. Okay, good. Because it's such a Minneapolis staple. I love food. oysters. When you, uh, Ben, have you been to Minneapolis? I have only gone there to go see Prince, and that's about the only time uh, I'm that's, ever going to go. Great, that's a good reason to go to, to Minneapolis, you know? No, but it's a great, it's a great little city, man. It's, it's a, not little. It's, it's a great city, period. Uh, yeah. But every time I'm there, every restaurant I walk into, I'm like, Pretty yeah, close. okay, I'll have a dozen oysters. There's yeah. oysters everywhere. It's, it's a great time. Champagne. There's a lot of very French... Uh, influence oh yeah french yeah. canadian i'm i'm 50 percent french canadian yeah. so all that stuff is jamming uh meat pies oysters anything <laughs> weird man we'll do i it. called you gagner for like the first year of our relationship and then i got your voicemail one day and i was like on you. yes oh, no. me I too <laughs> he's fancy <laughs> i remember that phone call you're like your last name is Gagne, and i was like yeah and you're like, I've been calling you Gagner. I'm like, yeah, I don't mean, like it doesn't even phase me because it's like right. the American way to say my last name. So sure. No sure. Good question here, Brian. Courtney uh, said, how do we sign up for the LCA drop notifications? Yeah. So, Courtney, um, you can email Clark at PravadaCigarClub.com. If you've ever purchased anything from our shop or uh, gotten an email from us on any level, you should once a month be getting this notice saying, hey, 
um, you know, uh, the stuff is going out and it's going to be at these shops. We do it regionally so that you don't get a huge list of every LCA shop. So if you're in Minnesota, we send you the Minnesota list and, and that kind of thing. Um, and we're working on better ways of, of getting an LCA map, so to speak, so nice. that people can just go check where, you know, where they can go. The Rob no, Vada Jesus. cigar from Pavada. Ah, like that. that was good. Write that down. That's right my boy, now. Mike. <laughs> Hashtag Rob Vada. That's Come awesome. On. Mike used to be Mike from LA. Now he's Mike from West Palm Beach. Nice. Did you convert him, Brian? Because you were in no, LA. No, no. He's from. He was from West Palm Beach. We wow. met in LA, and um, well, he was a member. He was a diehard member from the beginning. And then we did an event uh, in uh, Sherman Oaks, and um we met at a hennessy event shout out to hennessy and then we uh we just kept in touch and then when he moved back to west palm beach he was here recently uh for a party too so great guy joshua says uh oh wait rob's beard image as a brand oh yeah thank you for yeah, you gotta that. use the beard of course yeah. unfortunately everyone's got one now yeah uh, <laughs> joshua is poutine french canadian i think I think it is, but I have no idea. But it's delicious. I think the, poutine might yes. be uh, New Orleans. That you know, the, it, the, I, I, it might be. French. I'm not sure. Yeah. If it's New Orleans, I just consider it French. Okay. I'll yeah. Well, yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Maybe not the Canadian part. We can drop that. Right. But. Right. Right. Yeah, no, this has been good. Any other cigars that you guys wanted to talk about? Because I kind of like went through my top five. And I, I did want to mention because the club worked hard on it and they all voted. Um, the top five Pravada cigars. I know it probably doesn't matter to a lot of people that no, aren't. No, no, Pravada no. This members. does. I was going to ask you. Do you can you release a top five list? Yeah, yeah. So the top five list is as follows. I'll start um, at the bottom. It's actually one, two, three, four. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are basically the eight cigars that all battled it out. The bottom three all kind of tied or were very close. So we start, there was two cigars. One is called the PB Cup, Peanut Butter Cup. It was out of our Halloween that we did with Lost and Found. Oh, yeah. um, and, and the Plomo y Plata, those both tied for like the sixth spot, I guess. And... Um, the PB Cup we have back in stock in a Robusto. It's unbanded. Um, Supreme Leaf was uh, number uh, six then. I'm sorry. That, that was the seventh spot. Supreme Leaf was number six. These are honorable mentions. Supreme Leaf was a great cigar, and I could see it being on anyone's list. Now, what was um, the band on that? Was that the Pravada band? Supreme oh, Leaf? wait. You know what? I'm reading this this list wrong. I'm so sorry. The I'm sorry. Which Which band? What what was the band for Supreme Leaf? Yeah, so the that? the band that was the Agonorsa Supreme Leaf band. Um, yeah, so was I that helped the, the pink band with the Pravada sticker on it. No, no, it wasn't a, a no, 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 no. That was the original My Blue Heaven release with Agonorsa. My Blue Heaven. Yeah, oh, and we cool. have those back in stock in a six by forty four. It's probably my favorite cigar uh, ever. Yes. Sorry. And, um, yeah, ever. no. Yeah, yeah. The, the, there's a Robusto coming out that I love almost as much. It's extreme. Rob, the Robusto changes so much. Like, Ooh. it's a total different cigar. Like, I shouldn't have even put it in the, in the family of My Blue Heaven. But this one has a band, and it's a really cool band. And you'll figure out why after you smoke the cigar. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, you got uh, PB Cup was, like, number six. Poma y Plata was number, uh, number five. Supreme Leaf, The Cookie Monster, number three. Espinosa Cuban Link got number two. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, and The Good Life uh, that we did in collaboration with J.C. Newman. Shout out to Eric Newman. Thank you so much for being not only a giant in our industry and a legend, but someone that's also willing to look back and work with some of the younger boutique people in this industry. And we just think that is so cool that this guy can do it all. Um, and Good Life awesome. is a cigar. Yeah, it's a cigar you should absolutely check out. So Cookie Monster got third. Cuban yeah. Link by Espinosa got two. And The Good yeah. Life got number one. Yes. Brian, wow. you got to yeah. email me that list. We're going to tag it into the description here. I will. So I will. And, and also, um, there's a cigar that I want to mention from a company called Amendola. 
couple of young guys. They both rolled cigars. They both went down to Nicaragua and blended their own cigars, and they're fabulous. Really, mm. like fabulous. We're doing doing a program with them. Um, part of our, our good day pack. We have this. Pack. I wish the video worked. I'd show it to you. Um, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 they're little cartons. Okay. And they come with three cigars and there's like a line down the middle. It cuts it into thirds, morning, noon, and night. And th these are the cigars. So we, they're going to lead us off uh, of that program where they do a Cuban, a Havana, and then a Maduro. And they are just the perfect day of smoking cigars. Phenomenal. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, man. So much coming out of Pravada Cigar Club. I cannot wait to get. You know, I'm really coming. working my butt off, Rob. I, you know, I feel like I owe it to, to the members. These guys fuel me every day with thank you emails and uh, 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 comments on the YouTube and comments on the Instagram. And, you know, I'd be a real fool. Now, I've always wanted to serve a community. I thought that was going to be through music in a previous life. And, um, and, it, and it turned out to be cigars. And so... I am just going to serve this community as best as I can for as long as I can make it last. Heck yeah, Sweet. man. Keep on going, baby. Yeah, thank you. It. Thank you. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing your top five. Thank you for all the comments. This was by far the <laughs> most engaging I've ever nice. had probably nice. of any of this. Sweet. So thank you right. to the Pravada Cigar Club members. Yeah. Thank you, Brian, for making a killer cigar, the Black uh, history cigar month cigar that did ten thousand dollars it's so good I, there's like 30 wow. left on the site if you haven't it? had it yeah if you oh, haven't had man. it yeah you i, I made enough it. money to pay for the kids college yeah, man. You, <laughs> I gotta get it. you never yeah. know with this stuff so i was i'm thrilled oh, about yeah. that and boy is that cigar good huh oh my gosh yeah i don't even like left. torpedoes man and it's so good really i love torpedoes yeah. Ben, uh, Rob, hook us up with uh, that guy that you mentioned before, Solamente. Mickey and, Josh. And then hook us up with Ben so we can send her a little care package too. You got it, man. Yeah, that's okay. sweet. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate no problem, it. man. <laughs> Since we got to support our sisters of the leaf. You guys are, are going to be the next, you know, the thing that makes this thing go to the next level. So Absolutely, We are. Brian, we'll not argue with Next you. month, Brian. What's Inter that? International Women's Month. Oh, man. What are we going to do for so that? What do you oh, gonna, gonna I don't know. Let's get talking. I, I got some right. ideas. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey you'll have, we'll, we'll shoot an email be amongst each other. And if you have ideas, we'd love to support you. Awesome. awesome. Thanks. Okay. Cool. Again, thank you guys for joining me. That wraps it up for this Unbox Live this Friday. Thank you all for joining. As always, go back and check out our YouTube channel for more box press interviews, specifically with John Oliva Sr. or sorry, John Oliva Jr. Check out Brian's YouTube channel because that stuff is hot and there's always something cool coming out of that. And follow Sisters in Smoke on Instagram. She is there to engage with you guys and talk about cigars all the time. So until next week, have a blessed weekend.